Leaders need to keep working on their mindset because their mindset shapes their beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. You see, what we think is what we become. So our thoughts affect our emotions, and the emotions affect our actions or behaviors, which then, of course, produces results. So the thing here is that if you can work on your mindset that shapes your beliefs and attitudes and behaviors, then ultimately you're going to determine the effectiveness as a leader. People talk about a leader with a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Today we're going to talk about the seven things leaders should do to work on their mindset constantly. Now notice the word constantly. There's no leadership mindset pill that you can take and go, da-da, it's all sorted. We have to keep working at it. Let's discuss. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Welcome to the Ask Dennis episode. This is a freestyle episode where I'm asked a question by our listeners or I share my thoughts, experiences, and insights from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey, listeners, let's get into today's topic of the seven things leaders should do to work on their mindset constantly. Now, before we get started, actually, in this episode, I want to talk to you about leaders setting their intent. One of the biggest things you can focus on is setting your intent. The big thing here is this. When you are going into a situation, what do you do to set your intent? You know, what do you want to get out of that situation? And when you listen to these episodes on the Leadership is Changing podcast, what is your intent? Are you here to be entertained and listen to my voice? Or are you here to listen, learn, and then do something with it? I think it'd be better if you, if you do the latter, right? Do something with it. I'm going to ask you right now, to set your intent in relation to this episode or something that you need to do today. What I want you to do right now is hit pause and ask yourself the question. Well, leaders need to keep working on their mindset because their mindset shapes their beliefs and attitudes and behaviors, which ultimately determines their effectiveness as a leader, as I said earlier on. A leader with a fixed mindset well, they may be resistant to change. They might struggle to see different perspectives and be less adaptable to new situations. Then on the other hand, a leader with a growth mindset is likely to embrace challenges and learn from mistakes and seek out feedback to improve their performance. Now, by you constantly or continuously working on your mindset, that's where you as a leader can develop key attributes such as self-awareness or empathy or resilience and agility, which they're all essential for navigating through things which are complex or uncertainties. Additionally, a leader who prioritizes mindset development is more likely to inspire and motivate their team members to do the same. Why? Because they're going to create a positive, growth-oriented organizational culture. You see, there is their intent. In fact, their intent is more deliberate. Overall, leaders who recognize the importance of mindset development and committing to ongoing learning and self-improvement are better positioned to lead effectively and achieve their goals. Today, in our episode, we're going to talk about the seven things leaders should work on in relation to their mindset and how to work on it constantly. As I mentioned earlier, developing a growth mindset is critical for effective leadership, but it requires ongoing effort and attention. Focus. You've got to keep focusing on it because if you give it that effort and attention or focus, that's where things will grow. Okay, so let's dive into the seven things that leaders can do to develop their mindset. Number one, practice self-reflection. I love this one. 
One of the most important things leaders can do is to work on their mindset, to engage in regular self-reflection. Now, this means you taking time out to reflect on your own thoughts and your own feelings and behaviors and consider how they impact your leadership. Self-reflection could also help leaders identify their strengths and their weaknesses, but overall, they're going to become more self-aware and they can develop a growth mindset. Reflection is really important, whether you do that for yourself or you can do that with your team members as well. Number two is embrace failure. Hmm. There is this thing out there called the fear of failure. People are, have that fear. They worry about going out there and not succeeding. You just need to understand that failure is a natural part of growth and development. And we as leaders shouldn't be afraid to fail. Well, then what should we be? Well, we should see failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. See, it's a different intent. It's a different attitude if you think about it as an opportunity to learn and grow. Because when leaders embrace failure, that's when they start to become more resilient, adaptable, and open-minded, which are all going to be essential qualities or pieces of things that you need to put in place to be an effective leader. You ready for number three? Here we go. Seek feedback. Now, leaders should seek feedback from others, including their team members, their peers, and mentors. Now, feedback can provide valuable insights into how others perceive your leadership, and it can help you identify areas of improvement. Now, leaders who are open to feedback are willing to act on it and more likely to develop a leadership, develop a growth mindset. But here's a caution. Be careful who you're getting feedback from. Now, I would actually get feedback from the right people. If you're going to have somebody in your, in your, somewhere in the room that's just going to sit there in a corner that you don't even know you, you don't know them and they don't know you, and let's say you're doing a presentation and they're just sitting there going, not sure. Well, are you going to take feedback from them or are you going to take the feedback of the person who knows where you're coming from, has worked with you for many months, years, and understands and is actually a professional and been doing this themselves for a long, long time. This is why I'm saying be careful, cautious, and who you're getting feedback. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't seek out feedback. Because you see, feedback is the food of champions. Sometimes it's hard to take the feedback, but if it's delivered to you in a way that's constructive, and then you do something with it because your intent is to actually learn and be willing to act on it, then you can develop that growth mindset. Number four is learn continuously. Oh, what do you mean, Dennis? I mean, I finished school, university, I threw my books away. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there that did that, but we never stop learning. We are always learning. And leaders who think they know it all, well, there's a big thing coming for them, and it's called tripping up because you don't know it all. None of us do. We're all learning. And that's why you're listening to this podcast. This is why you're here to learn. Now, leaders should really make a habit of continuous learning constantly. And what I mean by this is this, is that means that you need to stay up to date with what's happening in industry trends, reading books and articles on leadership or personal development, or even going to conferences and listen to speakers, but also network with others in the industry and learn from them as well. And if you can do that, that's going to be a wonderful way. Maybe it's workshops. Maybe it's things like this, the podcast. You're already on the right track by listening to this one. If you continuously learn, it means that you're going to stay relevant. You're going to be adaptable and innovative. But that relevancy is going to be important because you don't want to be left behind. You want to stay relevant. Number five is practice gratitude. Gratitude is a powerful tool for developing a growth mindset. If you can practice gratitude, then you're more than likely going to have a positive outlook. You're going to be more resilient. You're going to be able to cope with challenges. Practicing being grateful or having gratitude can involve anything from journaling, in other words, writing it down, about what you're thankful for and expressing appreciation to team members and so forth. If you don't journal today, I'm going to encourage you to journal, write things down. 
Because if you can do that, it's going to be a great thing for you. Because you can always reflect back on these journals and see where you've come from, what you've learned, what's the journey been like for you. If you wake up tomorrow morning feeling a little bit grumpy, or you're not sure about certain things, get a pen and paper, or just think about it. And think about three things that you're grateful for in life. Three, three things that you're grateful for in business. Three things that you're grateful for as a leader. And see what comes up for you. Here it comes, number six, challenge assumptions. Challenge their assumptions. So you should be willing to challenge your own assumptions and biases. This means possibly questioning your own beliefs, your perspectives, and being open to alternative viewpoints. Because you see, leaders who are open or willing to challenge their assumptions, they're more than likely going to be open-minded, inclusive, and adapt. I had to do this recently whereby I was thinking about a certain client and the client, I didn't really want to do any more work with that client or didn't want to work with that client full stop. So I had to think about it. My values, my assumptions, what were the things that I were grateful for, the gratitude I had? Was I learning from the scenario? What was my intent out of the scenario as well? And so it resulted in me walking away so then I could actually free myself up to go and work on other things that are going to be in my area of strong intent. Number seven, take care of your mental and physical health. You know what? I, I talk about being match fit. I talk about how an athlete today who's been injured for a while that comes back into the actual sporting arena can't go on and play an international game, can't go and play at the top level straight away. Why? They have to be eased into it. Their fitness may have gone. Their strength in their body or certain areas may not be as strong yet. So what they need to do is that they need to come back in slowly, but they need to develop themselves mentally and physically. A lot of you today are sitting around in your desk. You might be listening to this episode right now while you're out walking or in the gym, things like that. Well done. Congrats. I think that's awesome. For some of you, you might be sitting in the car right now and going to another meeting. That's cool. Others, you could be sitting at your desk. We sit too much. We sit at our desks a lot, especially when we're working from home. So you need to look after yourself mentally and physically. This even means getting enough sleep. It even means eating well, taking regular breaks, engaging in activities that can re promote relaxation and stress reduction. Going to a movie, even though it means sitting down, going to a movie, movie that might be a lot of fun, that you're laughing a lot, going and just having that laughter, going and doing something that you probably haven't done for a while. Because you see, those leaders that do take care of their mental and physical health, they're the ones that are going to be able to handle the demands of leadership better. They're the ones that are going to be able to maintain that growth mindset a lot longer, stronger, better. Well, I said there was seven. There was really eight that I gave you. And that's how I started the actual episode today. The bonus number here is about setting your intent. If you can set your intent in everything you do and you think about it, you'll actually approach that a lot different than you may have been or you may do without actually setting an intent. So we've been talking today about working on your mindset as a leader. And it's a never-ending journey. But you know what? It's one that's worthwhile taking. So if you can practice self-reflection, you can embrace failure, learn from those mistakes or turning them into opportunities, seeking feedback, learning continuously, practicing gratitude, challenging your assumptions, and taking care of yourself both mentally and physically, then you can cultivate a growth mindset that can help you navigate those complexities and uncertainties that you and I as leaders face every single day. So keep striving for growth and improvement. And remember that your mindset as a leader sets the tone for the day and it also sets the tone for your team's mindset as well. Hey listeners, each week I refer you to two calls to action. Number one, 
This week's call to action is two questions that I'd like you to ask yourself and reflect on. Number one, what is your intent for today? Number two is what will you do to help develop your mindset constantly? And the second call to action is an offer for you. I have two coaching spots available. Two of them have opened up. I actually had three. One's gone. Two are remaining. Are you unfulfilled in your current role that you're doing today? And you're really wanting to crave, well, you're craving for something else. You want to do something bigger. Maybe you want to go to a bigger organization. Maybe you want to do a bigger role, but you're unsure how to make that leap. You might be somebody who's listening to this, and recently you've just been made redundant. Now, you're not sure where to start, what to do, how to get clarity around your next steps. And so if I can help you get clarity around that and be able to step forward with purpose and confidence, huh? would you be keen in chatting about that? Because you see, I've got an actionable coaching step-by-step approach that will help you gain that clarity and the courage you need to make your next move. Whether you're a corporate climber, an entrepreneur trailblazer, or you're wanting to go and do something else. You might be thinking about that you want to disrupt the status quo. Or you just want to find a greater purpose and fulfillment. Because you see, a lot of people are trying to achieve things, but they don't always have the fulfillment. So the executive coaching that I can work with you will provide you the tools and the guidance to make it happen. Now, if this sounds like you, what I'd like you to do is feel free to reach out to me and let's get on a free strategy call and discuss what your needs are and how I might be able to help you make that leap. Hey listeners, well that's it for this episode. It's always a pleasure being with you. Thanks for joining me on the Leadership is Changing podcast. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 